Right, time to get out for a quick blast on the bike and uh, brush up on those skills that I've lost all the way through winter. Not gonna lie, haven't been doing much. Let's go. Make sure I get my brain into gear. I do like these open, this bubble visor, it's really good. Right. Here we go. First time out in a little while. Tons of potholes down there, look. We're gonna take a right turn at the top of the road here. Welcome to the Bionic Bikers channel guys. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're riding safe. And today, I'm taking a little ride out to a place in Lincolnshire called The Wash. Now it's just up the road from me. It's pretty damn windy today, so uh, I don't know if that comes across on my speech, but uh, it is quite windy. And uh, there's a lot of mud on the road, so I wanna be careful around here. Let's go. Actually got a bit of rain coming down. Typical, first time out for a while. Yeah, it's raining. <laughs> oh god. I don't know. But there you go, it's all sent to test us, isn't it, eh? So this morning it was bright sunshine, how many of us do that? Oh, and a crosswind, nearly blew me to the right that time, very strong winds. Woo, I hit the wrong day, didn't I really? Uh, it's been a while, been a little while. Fortunately at the moment I'm not a fair, uh, sorry, at the, at the moment I am a fair weather rider. Um, that's all going to change pretty soon. Um, I could potentially be going back to my um, instructor riding training. That's a distinct possibility in the very near future. Uh, pick up where I left off. Which would be quite a good thing, actually. I don't know if anybody's ever done instructor training out there, but uh, oh, you do learn masses. The area I'm heading out to today, guys, is called the Wash. It's in Lincolnshire. It's a lot of basically fenland, flat fenland. I, I did another video where I went up this way and had a look at the air weapons area. Um, they live fire. They live test. Sorry aeroplane weapons and helicopter weapons. 
very very cool stuff uh, it does attract a lot of attention uh, the road ahead is closed oh well I've got to reach it another way because I can't get down there the, the road's closed uh, you find that quite often out here in Lincolnshire um, they just shut off a road and it's like really hard to get round there I don't know see where this takes us shall we this is one of the big things you want to avoid around here the dike <laughs> you don't want to Steve McQueen into one of them now this is why I don't like these roads in the winter it's not just because of the weather it's because of the mud tons and tons of mud everywhere where the farmers are ploughing up the fields so you've got to take it gingerly through some of this stuff you really have especially on road tyres anyway look at the vicar lovely place that is, the old vicarage Gorgeous. When I first learned to bike ride properly, I was in Romford in Essex. Romford, kind of East London area. And uh, a very, very busy built up area. Let me go over there for a second, jump off the bike. Control there wasn't very good, was it? Hey, I can't see myself with anyone else. So I got to the first on a list with a pain in my heart. No matter what I'll do, I try not to fall apart. I can't believe that this morning, all the way up to lunchtime, was absolutely beautiful. The sun was out, the sky was blue, and then uh, I decided to get the bike out. <laughs> it's raining, I've got mud on the roads everywhere. So careful out here, in the wash in Lincolnshire. Do a little bit of practice in here my slow speed stuff um, just because it might not be long it might not be long and I could be going back to a job as an instructor well I'm not a full licensed instructor to be honest I've got a lot of work to do but uh, down trained brush up on that and then start taking me actual tests what do you think guys Okay, let's go. Let's get out of here. this on the road look at it
now it's telling me to go left here but I don't think that's going to get us where we want to go I think that's going to take me all the way back the same way so we're going to try going right and uh, see if it takes me to where I want to go you can't see around these bends sometimes because there's a lot of bushes I can see some blue sky up there. <laughs> We'd be lucky. Look at this in the road here. Very dangerous, you come around there fast on a bike, hit that lump of wood, bosh. It ain't gonna end well, is it, eh? So, I was saying earlier, um, you know, I did do a lot of training originally in very built up areas in London, Essex, Basildon, Romford, those kind of areas, really, really busy. And, uh, They provide you with uh, unique skills. Now does that help when you come out into a rural area which is little lanes, lots of mud, tractors, crazy, crazy drivers out this way. I mean, they'll do 80 mile an hour in a tiny little dirt track. And the roads can be like the, just a nightmare, the potholes and that, that there are out here. What's this here? No, that's just a farm road. I'm not going to go up there. Might not be a good idea for me to. Anyway, yeah, so, um, you know, there's not so many roundabouts here, there's not so many traffic lights here, there's not so many zebra crossings here, you know, there's, there's none of that. Hardly. It's flat. It's got to be England's answer to Texas, okay? And I don't mean as in the, uh, <laughs> the oil, the cowboys, well there's plenty of cowboys out here actually, but uh, it's just so flat and it's all farmland. And I think that the uh, UK gets a massive amount of its fruit and, fruit and veg from Lincolnshire, where I'm living at the moment where Lizzie and I are living at the moment. You can see how much they patch up the roads. They do it all the time. Look, the roads are terrible. It's just a constant patch up, patch up, patch up all the time. So anyway, yeah, look, back to the differences. Let's go right here. The differences between riding out here and riding in a busy built up area like in uh, Essex where I used to live. Now, I've done a lot of um, training in what they call uh, motor learning um, and that's, that's motor learning of the nervous system for people basically. I used to work with athletes, uh, do rehabilitation and exercise training. Now, our science, yeah, I don't like this. The 
the science tells us that that I am going around here really slow guys alright I ain't taking no chances because I, I, I ain't been this way for a long time and uh, sometimes you come around the corner here and there's a massive great big tractor or two stuck right in front of you and it's not pretty Today's, today for me is, is all about just uh, getting my road craft better and just getting on the bike and getting the feel of the bike again um, anyway back to motor learning skills so uh, motor learning as in the nervous system not as in uh, a motor like this this bike is going to be filthy after this today now what you practice on and what you do is um, that are the skills that you pick up and by that I mean if you practice dirt bike riding it's not going to help you in MotoGP okay or Speedway and vice versa okay it doesn't work that way what you practice is the skill that you actually need and they call it specificity hard word to say especially when you're drunk specificity now specificity means train exactly like you want to play or you know do so in other words if you want to learn to ride in a busy built up area ride in a busy built up area if you want to learn to ride in the countryside go and ride in the countryside and keep practicing that until you build your skills up now well people will say but you still get on the bike you know you're still steering you're still braking you're still learning yes that that is true there are some familiarities and helpful parts but ultimately if you keep practicing say in the city and you get out to the countryside and think you could be the same that's not going to carry over it's not going to work okay it doesn't work that way see how they cut all these trees down down here all these great big trees these were huge look at that one they've chopped them all down now again going back it's not just um, where you practice your skills. Oh, the battery's gone. The battery on my. It's not just where you practice your skills. It's what you practice your skills on. Okay. If you're practicing your skills on a scrambler you're not going to have the same amount of skills or same amount of feeling as you would on a race bike on an adventure bike or any other type of bike the skill does not transpose you know you can imagine sitting on a race bike and then changing that for a scrambler or a dirt bike it's completely and utterly different different feeling, different position your brain has to think and move, the nervous system has to change completely and utterly different now that's as that, you know, I, I've seen this many times when I was doing instructive work and uh, I'll, I'll just pull over actually and put a new battery into the GoPro and then we'll, we'll carry on talking Let's see if I can pull over here for a second looks like there's a bit of space here another amazing shot of the day eh? Can you, I don't know if you can see on this camera my clocks I hope that's not Daniel no it's not Right guys. Look, sun's out. Sun's out, gun's out. Turn the bike off a sec. 
Yeah, so uh, I've often had a lot of people when I was doing the uh, bike instructor work, you get a lot of people come to you and uh, they're taking the CBT for the first time and maybe they're a middle-aged gentleman, a lady. They'll say that they did a lot of dirt bike riding when they were younger and even, even in later life as well. Never did their test, but always gone out in the fields and had a good time, you know, playing around on bikes. Now, whilst they know that their bike craft on a scrambler might be quite good, whilst your road craft might be quite good on a scrambler, what you've done in the past, it ain't going to mean a lot when you're out on the mean streets of Basildon or wherever you're learning to ride. It's a completely different setup, and I've seen people who are experienced on a bike, they know their way around it. Hell, some of them can even strip down engines and put them all back together. But once they go out on the road, they fail miserably. It's a complete and utter different beast. So bear that in mind. The two, not everything is transferable. And in fact, I, they, there is plenty of evidence, like scientific evidence, to say if you practice on a MotoGP style of bike and then you think you're going to go and do motocross or you're doing motocross to improve your MotoGP or doing MotoGP to improve your motocross, that can actually have a negative crossover or a negative impact because the two are very very different it's a completely different feeling on the bike so someone asked me recently should I continue to ride around on a 125 for a year and get that experience on the road before I go and ride a 5 600 cc bike and do my mod 2 leading up to my test now I'm always going to say do whatever you feel most comfortable with, but in my opinion, if you've got the money, go straight through, get on the big bike, start learning it, put a little bit more money into that, don't don't waste your money going out and buying a 125cc bike, putting petrol in it for a year, learning to ride on the road on a 125cc, it's not worth it. You can easily just put a little bit more money into your big bike work, do that, practice on that, and pass your test and buy yourself a decent big bike, which is going to be, in my opinion, it's a lot safer for you. And uh, it's, they're actually easier to ride. You know, once you get the hang of it, it's easier to ride. Now, Lizzie, um, because of her difference with her left arm, uh, she never, ever rode on a 125cc bike. She's never, ever been on one. She actually uh, started on a 600cc Suzuki. And she did a CBT on that because it was so difficult to get a 125cc bike, change all the controls over, get her to pass her test on that, take everything off, put it on another bike. It just wasn't worth it. It would have cost us far too much money and taken too long. And the rain's coming down again. And I just heard a gun. Or it could have been a rocket because we're going over to the air weapons range testing. Uh, but it's peeing down. So let's, let's cut that short now and let's go. Right, I'm going to try and get out of here. Typical rain, isn't it, eh? Oh, bloody England. I can't wait to get away from here soon. Well, it won't be soon, but I'm hoping next year we can do things a bit differently. Because, uh... Let's face it. The cold, the wind, the rain here in the UK, it's just awful, isn't it? It's no fun if you're a motorcyclist, is it? Hey? It's no fun whatsoever. Now, I think this is asking me, basically, to turn around and go the hell back. Yeah, as far as getting to the air weapons range, I don't know if that's going to happen today for me. Uh, that's because of this weather. The daffodils came up early February, yeah? They uh, harvest them out here like crazy. All getting ready for April. The further I go that way, where I was, closer towards the sea, the wash area is by the sea. Um, the air weapons range is right on the sea. It's great though. You get a couple of jet fighters coming in drop a couple of bombs <laughs> well unless you've been in the RAF you ain't never seen stuff like this I'll tell you it's hard to get it you have to uh, I mean it's hard to get there in, 
they tell for it when they tell you that the aeroplanes are actually showing up. This weather is terrible. I think it's getting worse. Although there's blue sky over there, um, over there, it, not good. I'm getting a bit pulled off the bike. But I've got to practice in all weathers, so. You know what they say, there's no such thing as bad weather, just the wrong clothes. Never been more true or on a motorbike. And like when you're out here, like, do you like to listen to music on a bike? I tell you now, I do. Sometimes. Listen to that exhaust, baby! Oh, it's hitting me in the eye, it's bad. It's just the best exhaust, it really is. Parks gloves. Um, ever since Motor Jitsu recommended them, I've hardly ever wore anything else. They're so comfortable, it just feels so good. But they are summer gloves; <laughs> they're not winter gloves. Uh, uh, oh, there's the vicar. Yeah, and your winter gloves. I've got a lovely pair of Gerbo heaty gloves, but. Just don't bloody wear them. You ever find yourself stiffening up on a bike, just like loosen out again? Lizzie used to say that to me years ago. She used to say like you're sitting there all bolt upright and like your arms are locked. No wonder you get tired. And I'm like, yeah, you're absolutely right. It just you gotta you gotta relax on a bike. You really gotta relax, you know. Anyone that rides pretty much knows that. I'm not trying to be smart or anything, I'm just reiterating what everybody knows really. Sometimes as well you go round a bend, if you go too tight on the inside, there'll be a branch sticking out. Smack you straight in the head. So I think we'll head back home. I wonder if I can remember the way on my own. I don't know that well out here. Remember that.
video. Fingers crossed. But uh, yeah, stick with us. Always try to make it as fun as possible. Motorcycle entertainment, you know. And uh, just bring a little bit of fun and sunshine into your lives. Well, not much sunshine, is it? Let's be honest. <laughs> Give us a like, share, subscribe, guys. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being you. Whatever part of the world you're seeing this from, take care. Bye. I'm, uh, I might be driving now on the stones. Oi, bye.